these planes are actually uh, programmed to fly because Boeing, uh, in the design of these airplanes, wanted these airplanes to be flown by the computer. And certainly a novice pilot would not be able to do that. You don't just sit down and start flying they, they, yeah, because you have to disengage the autopilot. It's already on a pre-programmed flight and so you have to take it off of that flight and literally then hand fly it and uh, and also there's a uh, the the airplane is, uh, has something called auto throttles and that that's being used during the flight meaning that the power is managed by the computer so you have to turn that off as well so someone would have to know what buttons to push to be able to steer that airplane and you know again when you're when you're talking about a 250,000 pound airplane being pointed at a specific target mm -hmm. that's not as easy as you think it is to do One of the scenarios in Operation Northwoods was to take a regularly scheduled commercial airliner and take a similar type plane, paint the tail numbers up to resemble that of the commercial airliner, fly it by remote control out over the uh, Caribbean, and by remote control uh, blow it up after sending a tape recorded message saying, help, we're being attacked by Cuban MiGs. Um, this was in 1962. Second one I saw, it was big, though. Yeah, big enough. There was no, there was no Cessna. No, 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 no Cessna. Yeah. But it didn't have any markings on it that I saw. No, I didn't see any. The second one I didn't have, you know, like no camouflage or anything. No, no emblems, no logos. Second plane was uh, was an unmarked uh, silver fuselage. I'd say it was like a two-engine plane or something. Uh, but it didn't look like an airliner to me because it was black. This one did it on first something. Okay. A black plane. Yeah. We see it going yeah. around. He went. Yeah. Yeah. We just saw it. A black plane. Yeah. We see it going yeah. around. He went. Another plane. The plane wasn't no uh, airline or anything. It was a twin-engine, big gray plane. When you when you saw the second one happen, what did it look and like? It was a smaller, much smaller plane. But it, uh, someone said it looked like a military plane. But I'm not sure. I'm not. I, I don't know much about airplanes. Mark, were you close enough to be able to see any markings on on the airplane? Um, it definitely did not look like a commercial plane. I didn't see any windows on the sides. No, it was a black plane. It looked like a fighter jet. It, it looked like a fighter jet. And it didn't look like a commercial jet. It was a military plane. Could could be a drone aircraft. That's an aircraft that's a, a guided electronically uh, to its target without having a pilot. The plane circle around and actually come on to the opposite side of the building and smash into the Trade Center. It was great, to be honest with you. We watched the first explosion as we were watching the building. We saw a black, very large airplane fly right into the second building. It came out of the south, right, right in front of our eyes. Just, it, it was so surreal, like a movie set. Second, second and third explosion. The only other thing that was found was the engine on Murray Street and uh, the engine on Murray Street 
is has been identified as either a CFM 56, CFM stands uh, for Senecma, uh, and uh, or uh, uh, the CF6, which was a 76 engine, a 767 engine, which was developed out of the CFM uh, 56. Uh, but whichever one it was, the CF6 or the uh, CFM 56, it had to be General Electric. And unfortunately, or fortunately, United Airlines used strictly Pratt & Whitney. So that engine that you see flying off, and that engine they say is from 175, isn't from 175, because the guy's whose job was to dump it off there, dumped off the wrong engine.